Hello, hello, greetings. This is a shear and bending moment diagram problem. We have a beam. I'm going to label this node the PIN pin support as A and the pin roller support I'm going to call B. And before we get to shear moment diagrams, we have got to do our reactions. So how are we going to do that? Well, we create a free body diagram. We want to free the body from the support. So I'm going to take away the support at B. I'll grab the dimensions too, why not? Grab this stuff, cut out that support at A, and keep everything else. Okay, there is our free body, or what's going to turn into our free body here presently. And let's see, let's clean this up just a little bit. What we're really doing over here is um, disconnecting this bolt, or disconnecting the bolt. So our free body is the beam itself. We've got kind of our uh, wrong color bolt hole here. Then we want to put in forces that represent the actions of the supports onto the structure. And I'm just going to make a little assumption here. So I am going to assume that the reaction at A is upward. I assume that that is upward. Oop. Oops, I'm kind of showing like that bolt that has been taken out of the hole. Let me make this just a little bit better. I get kind of picky with my drawings. You know that. There we go. So essentially, we've taken the bolt out of the hole. Now, this is the force of that bolt bearing on the hole. And we'll call that A sub Y. It's going to be one of our unknowns. And we also need to make an assumption over here at B. And I am just going to also assume that this is an upwards reaction and call that B sub Y. All right. It's one other little thing I would like to do to this free body before we get started. And I've got kind of this force couple. I've got two kips of force to the right. I've got two more to the left. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change those two into a couple moment right there that is equal to the product of the force and then the distance between the two vectors that comprise the force couple. So I'm just going to turn this into an eight kips times feet moment. And after I've done that, I'll just take these forces out of here. I've replaced them with a statically equivalent system. And I don't need this anymore. Get rid of that one too. And I think I am kind of ready to rock and roll through this problem. All right. Let's do our equations of equilibrium. And I'm going to start with a moment equation. I'm going to do um, a summation of moments about A is equal to 0. And I've got several terms here, so I kind of like to tally those up. I'm going to have that one, two, three, four, five terms in this moment equation. And I'll just do them all from left to right. First term, five, well, I'll do blue, that's fine. Five kips times a distance, half of five. EQL just means equal. I think that's self-evident, but if it's not, that just means equal. Um, so that five kips is equally spaced left and right within that five feet. So that's how I know that this is 2.5 feet. 
right? So five kips times 2.5 feet. That one with respect to A, I'm gonna pop another layer here so I can delete this a little bit later. Um, so that one with respect to A is a clockwise or negative rotation. Okay, next term. This is what I wanted to be able to do. There we go. Next term, my eight kip feet, I've already got kips times feet as units. So I do not need to multiply that times something. Sometimes students like want to multiply it by five, but that's, that is not how that works. And here we just observe that that is a clockwise um, vector and give that a minus sign as well. Next up is the 25 kips. That's at a distance of 10 feet. 25 kips, distance of 10 feet. And the direction is going to be positive or counterclockwise. Okay. Next term, and actually maybe I'll just um, maybe I'll just clean up my free body a little bit actually here. So I'm going to take this two kips per foot distributed load and replace it with a concentrated force right in the middle. So I would just say two kips per foot times five feet. So that gives me a statically equivalent force of 10 kips. And of course, once I bring that to the party, I do need to get rid of this line load. You don't want to like double count that. It'd be really misleading to leave both of those in there. So we're going to swap it out for a statically equivalent system. And also note that that location is halfway from B, which is two point five feet. Okay, that's looking good. Get my layer going on here. Okay, remember we had five terms, summing moments about a, so we don't have to do a sub y. That one's coincident, but we have one, two, three, four, five terms, three down, two to go. Our penultimate term is 10 kips. That distance is five, 10, 15, 20 minus 2.5. That should be 17.5 feet. Direction is clockwise negative. Last term is our unknown B sub Y. That is located 20 feet from A sub Y. And that one is a counterclockwise or positive rotation. All of that, oops, leave that there. All of that is going to sum to zero. And if I was doing this, I would then immediately go to my calculator and just type minus 5 times 2.5 minus 8 plus 25 times 10 minus 10 times 17.5. Multiply that times negative 1 to put it on the other side of the equation and then divide by 20. And we are going to get the following value for b sub y. I'm going to put this back on my main layer so I have it here in a minute. Okay, so b sub y is equal to negative 2.725 kips. That was when we were assuming that that reaction was going upwards. And so to avoid any confusion or miscommunication, I would always, always, always rephrase this as or 2.725 kips down. Now, when you're doing shear and moment diagrams, you are going to want to keep all of your sig figs in your calculator. If you round things, you will pay the price later. All right, so I'm going to put that there. And then I'll go back to this other layer and finish out with our other equation of equilibrium. So we just did a moment summation. There is another equation that is helpful. Summation of forces in the y direction equals zero. How many terms am I going to have? One, two, three, four, 
five. Everything that goes up, that's a sub y, that's 25. Everything that goes down, that's b sub y, 2.725 kips, that's 10 kips and five kips. Put all that into your calculator. And the result will be a sub y is equal to negative 7.275 kips up, which is the same as 7.275 kips down. Okay, and do those answers make sense? Do those answers make sense? Well, you know, we have this downward force. Let me grab the right layer. We have this downward force of five in proximity to the AY. We have the 10 kip force in proximity to BY. We also have this rotation, but it looks like this 25 kip force here is kind of driving the behavior of the system. That's why both A sub Y and B sub Y are these holding down reactions. Okay, this is looking great. So we are ready to do our shear and moment diagrams. I'm just going to leave my reactions over to the side. Instead of redoing the free body, I'll just leave them over there in tabular format, no big deal. And I'm going to draw some lines, one there, one there, one there, one here, one here, and one there, it's lining everything up, okay? Um, let's do a horizontal line right there. That is where we will do our shear diagram. And I'll do another one right about maybe right there. That one will be our moment diagram. Let me do one other thing. No, it's okay. It's okay. Let me just zoom out. Okay, shear diagram. Let's label this with units of kips. Let's label our moment diagram with units of kips times feet. And that way we don't have to label every value. So let's start over at A. And of course, we always start our shear diagram out at 0, 0. The first force we come to as we move from left to right is the reaction itself. So we're going to jump down 7.275. Over the next little distance, we have a constant function. And then we'll jump down another five kips. It's going to put us here. That adds up to 12.275. I think I'm going to zoom her in just a little bit so you can see this better as I work. Okay. Um, now for the next two and a half feet, we also plateau. So constant shear function. Internal shear is not changing. We blow past our internal moment. That's not going to affect our shear at all. Continue across here. And now we get to our big four. So that 25 kips up is going to land us at a positive value right up here. And that positive value is negative 12.275 plus 25, that is 12.725. 
plateau across, nothing doing. And over the final uh, five feet of the beam, we decrease by 10 linearly. So we're up at 12 and change. We go down 10. That puts us at 2 and change, specifically 2.725. I've come down linearly. And last but not least, don't forget that reaction. So over at B, there is a hold down, downward reaction of 2.725 kips. That gets us exactly back to zero. We usually get a question about this symbol and what it means. And um, I will say that the use of this symbol, the pen roller, is context specific. But when I use it, and when most people use it, this is what we mean. We mean that translation in the x direction is permitted, and translation in the y direction is prohibited. Okay, so we draw it, you know, looking something like this, but I want you to visualize it or think about it like this. And so what we know is that at that pin, we can sustain a reaction that's either up or down. I sometimes get a question about that since we clearly have a hold down, pulling it down type of force reaction there. All right, next up is to do the moment diagram. And in order to make that happen, you're going to want to calculate each of these areas, right? So we could do this area, call that one area one. That's the area of a rectangle. We're going to want to separate this area. I'll call that area two. And then area three, we want to do that separately. And the reason why is because we have an applied moment in our beam right here. And just as before, let's see if I can just make this change. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these two KIP forces. Two times four is eight. We've talked about that once already. So I'll just get this out of here as well and change that into a curly vector or a couple moment of eight kips times feet. Just kind of simplify that a little bit. That change will not affect our shear and moment diagrams. Okay, so we know that once we get to that applied moment that we are going to need to jump when in our moment diagram. And so that's why I want to calculate area two and area three separately, just planning ahead. OK, scooch on over. We would have to calculate area four. All of this is area four. And the last one here would be area five. And I am going to trust that everyone watching this video is pretty good at calculating the area of a rectangle by this point in your education. Um, but the trapezoid here, I want to kind of remind you of the easiest way to do it. Sometimes I see students do something like this. They might try to break up that trapezoid into a triangle here and a rectangle here and do two different areas separately. But there's actually a formula that will expedite that area calculation. All you need to do, so we're going to make this distance be H1. This distance, I'll call that H2. And there's the base. And if I were to draw. If I were to draw a line here, do you see how I could take a pair of scissors, cut off this triangle from the trapezoid, rotate it, and place it here? 
In other words, if I can figure out my average height, wrong tool, that one was not helpful. If I can figure out my average height, then I could just take my average height and multiply it by my base for the four um, area of this little trapezoid. In other words, the formula you can memorize is that the area of a trapezoid is equal to h1 plus h2 divided by 2. That's the average height times b for base. All right, so I'll give you just a second to pause the video, calculate those five areas, and then resume play, and I'll do the last step for you here. For our moment diagram, we want to graphically integrate the shear diagram, and of course, we want to start at 0, 0. I'm going to start right there. We are going to decrease by the area, area 1. That lets me come down to 18.1875. Since this is a constant function in shear, I'll use a linear function in moment because I'm graphically integrating. Area 2 is negative, so I want to decrease again. So we're going to add area 2 to area 1. That lands us way down here at 48.875. Okay. Again, my units are over here in the legend, so I don't need to write them on every value. Now we have our applied force, 8 kip feet clockwise jump up. So let's add eight, jump up to this. That's going to land us at 40.875. And when I'm doing shear moment diagrams, I usually do all of these operations in my calculator one step at a time. And that way I keep all of the sig figs. And that lets me start at zero, zero. And then that lets me end at L comma zero. So if you're noticing that usually I report fewer sig figs in my diagrams, I'm much more flexible with shear and moment diagrams because those um, extra sig figs are going to help you out. OK. I'm going to do one little logistical move. I'm going to move that label down just a little bit. And now we're ready to continue. So figure out what area three is decreased by that one. It's around 60. And I'm going to decrease linearly to this maximum negative internal bending moment, 102.25 kips times feet. Next up is area four. Unlike area one, area two, I'm going to get a bigger tool for that actually. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use green. All right, so there's negative, negative, negative. We're going to finish off with two positive areas. So our function is going to increase for the rest of this plot. We increase by area four. That will get us up to 38.625. And the last segment, we increase quadratically up to zero by area five, which is equal to 38.625. How do we get there? Well, we have to we have to figure out the concavity. And this is probably where the most errors occur on these problems. If your shear function, if your shear values are decreasing from left to right, okay, they're going in the negative direction, less shear, less shear as you go from left to right. That is a concave down 
quadratic parabola. Let me try to draw that one more time. These are always very smooth curves. It is a concave down quadratic function. How do I know it's quadratic? Well, I'm just increasing the order of x. So I have linear up here. That function is in terms of x. This one is going to be in terms of x squared. All right, that's it. That is the solution to the shear moment diagrams for this problem. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was helpful.